Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video on gradient and direct proportion. So we're looking at situations where the gradient represents something in real life. So let's look at this example here. Person rides a bike at a constant speed for 40 kilometers in five hours. We're gonna graph their distance versus time, find an equation linking distance and time and calculate their speed. So firstly, let's look at the graph. So we're going to have one axis is distance and one axis is time. Because neither distance nor time can be negative, we don't need to do the whole Cartesian plane, just the first quadrant. So the first quadrant is where X and Y are positive. So we're only going to look at that. Now it is convention that you have time along the x-axis. So whenever the question involves time, that goes on the x-axis and distance on the y-axis. Of course, the question was talking about 40 kilometers in five hours. So the distance will be in kilometers and the time will be in hours. So let's set up our axis. Of course, we're going to five hours. So we wanna set up our x-axis from one to five. And of course, from our distance, we wanna go from zero all the way up to 40 kilometers. So that's all we need to see on our axis. And of course, where they meet is zero. Now, constant speed means linear. It turns out here, speed is actually going to be the gradient of our line because it is the change in distance over the change in time. Remember the gradient is rise, which is distance, over run, which is time. So because the speed is constant, the gradient will be constant, and constant gradient means straight line. So that makes our job really easy. At zero, zero, we start because they will have traveled no kilometers, no distance in after zero hours and they go until they've traveled 40 kilometers in five hours. So we have two points, all we need to do is join them up with a straight line. Constant speed means straight line. How easy is that? Now this time we don't really need to put arrows and keep going forever because we don't know if they kept cycling after five hours. So that is the graph that represents their journey of 40 kilometers in five hours. It's a straight line because the speed is constant. So that means our first part is done. Now what's the equation linking distance and time? So hopefully we know that when you have a line that goes through the origin, it's y equals something times x. That m is actually the gradient. So when we have a line that goes through the origin, y equals something times x, we say that x and y are directly proportional. In this case, x was time and y is distance. So the distance traveled is directly proportional to the time traveled. The distance is just 40 kilometers times the number of hours. So that gives us our equation nice and easy. Y, which is the distance in kilometers, is just 40 times the number of hours. Y equals 40x. That is the answer to the second part there. And calculating their speed, well, I said before, speed is the gradient. The gradient here is rise over run. So to start from here and get to here, of course, the run is 5. We've gone from 0 to 5, and the rise is 40. So the gradient, which is the speed, is rise over run. 40 over 5 is 8. And of course, it was 40 kilometers in five hours, so the speed is eight kilometers per hour. So I know you knew how to calculate speed before this video, but I wanted you to see it in terms of gradient. When you're traveling at a constant speed, the distance time graph is a straight line and speed is the gradient. All right, that's all there is to it. Of course, there are other examples of direct proportion. Say if you were filling a water tank that started at zero and you were filling it at a constant rate, then the volume of water in the tank 
versus time would be a straight line graph and the gradient in this case would be the rate at which you're filling it up. Direct proportion does have other applications other than speed that you'll look at in the exercise. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.